Hey everybody, I'm Captain Jack, I'm one of the Minecrafters, and this video tutorial is all about how to automate the energizing orb with AE2 and refined storage. Before we get started here, there's a couple things that you need to know. Since we're using refined storage and AE2, you will have to know something about the mod before you can successfully do this. I'm not going to be talking about either mod in depth here, but you can find our tutorial videos linked in the description below. Since most of you are here just trying to find out how to automate the energizing orb, you probably already know how to use the power mod, but in case you don't, there will be a link in the description of the video below that you can click to for a full tutorial. Automating the energy orb with AE2 is the absolute simplest method to do this with. Aside from having your base network set up, every block you need to automate this is right here. The blocks you'll need to do this are an ME pattern provider, the energizing orb itself, an import bus, some smart cable to connect it to your system, and your rod in order to energize what's inside of the orb. Next, use your ME pattern encoding terminal to encode the recipes needed to make the product. So we're going to put one gold and one iron with an output of two energized steel. We're going to get a blank pattern. We're going to program that under processing pull it out, and shift click it into our pattern provider. What the pattern provider does is it pushes the contents of your pattern into the energizing orb to get it ready to be energized. But there's one important thing that you need to know before you set this up. You need to go into blocking mode, and that makes it so it does not push more than one set of crafting ingredients into the orb at a time. If you don't have blocking mode set, your energizing orb is going to get clogged with all sorts of items, and it won't work. In order to make this setup as fast as possible, I put some acceleration cards inside of my ME import bus in order to pull the items out faster when they're completed. This import bus will not pull out the initial items put in for the recipe, so it's very smart. Provided you have all the materials necessary, all you need to do now is go into your ME system, click however many of these you want to make, hit next, and start. And it will begin energizing whatever item you put in there. When you're using this system and you want to craft multiple recipes at once, you are going to have to have multiple crafting units set up in order to process multiple patterns. So you can see here, if I go and try to make a Niotic Crystal while it's making a different kind, it's not going to let me because there's no CPUs available. Adding more crafting units to your AE2 network will allow you to queue up more recipes at once. If you did this correctly, you'll never have to worry about your energizing orb clogging up with anything other than the recipes that you wanted. And that is all you have to do to automate using AE2. Now let's find out how to automate with refined storage. Again, the refined storage method is really simple, but you need a little bit more integration with other mods to make it work properly. The reason for this is the refined storage crafter does not have blocking mode on it, so it won't do this as well or efficiently as AE2, so you need an outside mod. For this example, I've used gauges and switches. I have an industrial comparator switch and a two button machine switch set up to send a redstone signal from the energizing orb through the comparator to the two button machine switch into the crafter and I have this set to redstone pulse inserts next set. So whenever the crafter receives a redstone pulse it will push in the next set. If you don't have this set up this way it's going to clog your energizing orb and nothing will craft. Setting up the patterns is very easy. Just like AE2, you want to check processing, put your materials needed and the outcome here, get a pattern in this slot, create, output, and then throw that right in your crafter. In order to set this up using gauges and switches, take your comparator, put it directly on your energy orb, and your two button switch directly on your crafter. Take an ender pearl, right click on your switch, right click on the comparator, and now they're linked. So now when an item goes inside here, the redstone signal is sent and that's it. As you can see, this works great and exactly the same as the AE2 with just a little bit more work. The patterns will never bunch up and you'll be able to queue up multiple crafting recipes a little bit simpler than AE2 because you don't need the multiple crafters. With this setup too, I've also added a stack and speed upgrades underneath inside the importer to make sure items get pulled out as quickly and efficiently as possible. Finally, before we close out, I want to show you one more method to automate the energizing orb using only vanilla blocks. If you're sitting in front of your computer right now going, man, this is exactly the tutorial that I needed, then please do us a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It goes a long way towards supporting what we're doing here, and we really appreciate you watching.
One quick thing I want to cover before we go is the way the energizing orb works. So the vanilla comparator here basically is the equivalent of the blocking mode from AE2's crafting setup or the redstone signal that we use with gauges and switches. This is just a little more caveman-ish. So what the comparator does is it recognizes how many items are inside of the contents of the energizing orb. So if I go ahead and put some beef wellington in here, you can see that it's telling me the redstone signal level is 1 and the redstone strength has gone out to here. If I add another one, it goes out even farther. And you can add up to 6, and you can see my gauge is going up there to 6. The strength goes all the way out almost to here. The reason why this may be important in your setup is because some of the crafting recipes require one items, two items, or four items, so the redstone strength signal is going to be different based on your craft. So here's the vanilla setup. I have my energizing orb set up next to a comparator. And the comparator is sending the redstone signal into this block right here. Keep in mind it can be pretty much any block. Once it goes into this block here, the redstone signal gets pumped over to this block here, which hits a repeater and goes into the crafter. And the point of the repeater is, is that it closes this whole system so that the redstone signal strength is never more than one because I only have one piece of redstone dust in this whole setup. Here you can see the difference between the redstone levels. And that's gonna do it for this tutorial. If you liked it, like I said before, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and stay poised for more awesome tutorials.